Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on the switch statements and uh, now we try to see why someone would choose switch statements over the if else statements, right? We looked at the if else construct before. These are also some sort of decision making and uh, testing and switch was the same uh, story, right? We have multiple cases, but then if uh, the first case or the first test that matches, we execute the body and hopefully we have a break to out of it. And we also saw that the switch has some weird uh, or unique uh, behaviors like fall through and uh, the default case. So, um, so let's go ahead and look at this. Deciding whether to use if else statements or switch statement is based on readability an expression that the statement is testing. Now we know that um, with the if else uh, in any of the conditions, you can if it's inside the method call, you can uh, uh, basically immediately return from a method call. But the question is, does the switch statement do this or not? So I'm going to go back here to our uh, testing and then let's have a new uh, method, public static void test four, right? And I'm going to uh, basically have test four here. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to say int x equals five, and then uh, um, uh, let's uh, return an int, for example, from here. And then uh, um, uh, what we're going to say is that uh, let's switch on the uh, switch on the x, right? And then value zero, and then uh, note that here uh, the default is yield, but uh, I'm not going to use yield. And uh, I'm going to just say uh, basically if case is zero, for example, return two times uh, or uh, basically x plus five, right? And this works fine, which means uh, basically uh, uh, if we say uh, var x here and do a sys out on the x and we run this, uh, unexpected value five. So uh, where is this switch statement here? Uh, so uh, because this didn't match, we're throwing this exception. Let's set this to zero. See if this matches, and we get. So you can even return. So um, you can uh, even uh, immediately return from a uh, switch a, a statement, right? So uh, it's allowed. So basically return allows similar with the if else, right? You can say if x equals uh, equals zero, then return with x plus five, right? Now what happens if we do have a fall through case one, um, uh, the return for example, two times x. This is still allowed. We can have multiple returns because um, uh, basically uh, each one is a separate test. So if we have zero, we know that the switch showed some sort of uh, basically fall through behavior because which meant if we didn't have any break, we have to, the other, the first test that matched, we execute the body, but then the other tests become invisible. And unless we have a break, we still continue. So let's see what happens here. We still get five, which means uh, uh, with the return already we have some sort of uh, break return has some sort of break uh, behavior right breaking behavior and uh, obviously the difference here is that if we have some expression here so after uh, the switch and as you can see the compiler uh, doesn't allow us to do this because it says that the compiler realizes that um, uh, when we go into the switch, we have returns, so uh, this code can never reach. So this is one problem, right? So unreachable code, and we saw before that in Java, the Java compiler doesn't allow having uh, unreachable code because uh, so uh, even if we don't match anything because we have a default body, something, uh, um, uh, uh, so we still have this compilation. So uh, basically, what if we don't add a uh, default case here, then uh, now the compiler realizes that if none of these tests matches, we just come out of the uh, switch, but uh, without uh, basically without returning from the method call, the compiler is smart enough to realize that. So this line of code is now reachable. The problem is that uh, if we add the default, then uh, 
the compiler realizes because one of the cases is returning or the other tests are returning the compiler assumes that the default has to also return or throw an exception so if I leave this empty um, if my default is something like uh, do something uh, sys out for example uh, in default in the default branch then what happens is the compiler realizes that hey two of the cases return but the default doesn't return so and the compiler doesn't allow you to do that because this method has to return an int so either we have to return something like x for example as the default value or otherwise the compiler says realizes that two branches return but the default doesn't branch uh, doesn't return a int value and the rest of the code is not uh, also returning anything and it's not allowed and you can even have for example uh, something like this even uh, with this we get if uh, we throw an ex uh, by the way uh, before if we return um, so throwing exceptions I believe is legal here uh, yes, because the compiler realizes that okay, we're returning. If we run returning, we throw an exception, and uh, we haven't discussed the exception yet. But exceptions also mean when an exception is thrown in a is thrown in a method, we immediately return from the method, and uh, the, basically the JVM goes into a panic mode. That's the meaning of uh, exceptions, right? That's why the compiler is not arguing or complaining about the fact that the default branch doesn't return anything because it realizes that it's the panic mode, right? But anything besides throwing an exception is not allowed because the compiler says that, hey, I'm expecting an int, but this default branch might get executed, but then it's not returning any. So be careful about this kind of stuff. Now with the if else statement, uh, because if else uh, doesn't have to do any uh, if you use if else if then you, you don't have to have a default uh, basically when you use the if else statements uh, basically you say uh, be, um, when you do for example uh, if and uh, something and then uh, basically else something else now this else is pretty much your default right because if the test the original test that you intend uh, fails then we go into the default mode and we know to do something right so um, it's similar to these cases because if any of these cases succeeds we know what to do otherwise we also know what to do there is a default branch right so if I don't include the default branch the compiler doesn't allow me because the compiler is smart enough to know that hey maybe none of these tests succeeds but then we jump out of the switch and there is no other return statement so the compiler is smart enough to realize that um, that's why the compiler allows you to throw as a default action throw an exception and jump out of the method and go into a panic mode right so this is allowed even though we are not explicitly using a return statement we are still allowed to throw exception right um, and if else statement can test expressions based on ranges of values or conditions whereas a switch statement tests expressions based on only a single integer enumerated value or a string objects and we saw that the, the condition the restriction on the switch was the type of uh, things uh, the types that you are allowed to do switch on them so you cannot switch on a floating point or a 64-bit integer for example uh, you can only switch on uh, maximum 32-bit integers or a strings for example things that are kind of immutable because you don't want to change the condition or mutate the condition in the body of the uh, condition itself right so all these wrappers are immutable a, a raw primitive type is immutable for example enums are immutable a strings are immutable so you can see what's going on right Switch, one, switch wants to make sure that you don't change the condition or the variable um, when you basically um, uh, when you basically uh, switch on them and I believe in the uh, earlier uh, versions of the Java uh, strings were not supported so you could only switch on the primitives but then uh, uh, they realized that uh, strings are also immutable so you cannot change them so we can also switch on them right and again, switch just means uh, check for exact equality, exact match. Uh, 
uh, switch statement test expressions based on only a single integer enumerated values or a string objects for instance the following code uh, could be written in a switch statement right so we have this month and again best practice uh, define this month as final because we're not going to change it in the rest of the body of the code and this is an if else statement right if month equals one do this and and this is a perfect candidate for converting to a switch um, because uh, uh, because uh, we have a variable of type int which can be switched on right we can use uh, int variables in a switch expression and then uh, we're just doing some uh, um, uh, prints to the console so on the other hand uh, the following code could not be, be written in a switch uh, statement because switch statements do not support labels of type boolean which means uh, i mean for the if we know that if requires a condition a, a statement that evaluates to boolean so um, here we have an integer type but the condition is a boolean type right and uh, remember in this case it's also boolean but the, the the condition is exact match and exact match is pretty much what switch does but here we're not checking exact match of the temperature to something we are checking a condition a range of values so we can't really uh, compare this uh, or convert this to a uh, switch uh, switch uh, uh, a statement right so we can only check in the switch when the case in and in the cases that follow this body of the switch you can only do uh, base exact match right so using a string as a type for the case labels or basically switch parameters um, uh, from Java 7 uh, strings you can also use uh, strings remember you cannot use uh, 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 any type of object reference but you can use a strings because the strings are immutable and you can check for the exact equality of two strings right and here we're talking about raw string literals right in the switch statements expression the following code example displays the number of months based on the value of the string named month so month is an object reference pointing to a basically a string in the memory but we can switch on this type that's because uh, uh, strings are immutable and it's uh, and therefore and we can also check for the exact equality of two uh, strings um, so we convert this to lower case and again we said that we can have a expression anything that returns uh, the result we can have a s expression or a statement in the argument of the switch in a way that it's the result of its evaluation is one of the allowed types so when we say two lower case um, it re the result is also a new a string so the a string type is allowed and then january february march etc right and the default is a zero so um uh, the thing here is that again this is a perfect candidate for converting into the enum so instead of switching on a string we switch on an enum because the set of uh, uh, no, uh, of the cases is has definitely a limited number of cases which is to a the string in the switch expression is compared with the expressions associated with each case label case label it means this variable that we put in case right and we said that this the case cannot be an expression so you cannot say here uh, two times four uh, actually you can say as long as it can evaluate it in the compile time so case label uh, as long as it can be evaluated only compile time constants are allowed so for example if i define int y equals 5 right if i say why, uh, why here it's not allowed because the compiler says that case expressions must be constant expression and constant expression means compile time constants we know that uh, a, a literal like 5 is a compile time constant but any expression that is formed based on the uh, literals is also a compile time constant for example 2 times 5 this is not something the compiler can evaluate this at compile time so um so we can write uh, two times five for example that's fine this is allowed uh but obviously two times f y is not allowed even y is not allowed but in the, my past lectures i showed you a way to uh, let the compiler know that uh, for example a variable is a compile time constant it's not going to change and the trick is to define it as final as soon as you define it at final you tell the compiler that hey the y can never the value of the y can never change and the compiler says oh then i know what this value is two times y uh, 
And later when we look at the bytecode, we see that this two times y is not evaluated at runtime. In the bytecode, we don't have two times y. We just, you know, the bytecode for two times y is to load the value of y and then load the value of two and then do the multiplication. But we see that in the bytecode, it's actually just written 10 as a, a integer, right? Which means, um, which means uh, the compiler was able to evaluate this. Again, so the case labels the, or the case values, you cannot have an expression unless uh, 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 it has to be a compile time constant, which means the compiler has to be able to evaluate it at compile time. You cannot defer it to runtime um, uh, by having a non-final variables in your case label. But as long as it's final, it's perfectly allowed and you can have any expression here. So this is an expression, it will be evaluated at compile time. Again, I want to emphasize this and we can also quickly um, look at the, uh, this, uh, the bytecode to double check this one. So if you look at test four here, and um, if I zoom in, uh, let's see what happens. I const four for this one loaded in zero. I const five. Uh, uh, I store one. Know that the the final keyword doesn't have any effect on uh, basically the bytecode. We are still defining a variable. We are storing to y. So final is purely a compile time thing, right? Final is not in the bytecode. At runtime, the JVM doesn't know that the value of y doesn't uh, change. It doesn't matter. It only final only matters to the compiler when the compiler tries to generate the bytecode, right? So uh, I load zero, uh, obviously for the switch, we have to load the value of X first to check switch on it. Lookup switch, so you see this is a bytecode for the switch, we do a lookup switch. So switch has a uh, its own bytecode for these cases and note that what happens, case one, 36 case 15 32 what this means is that uh, if uh, um, if uh, the lookup uh, uh, so these are the bytecode lines right jump to 640 jump to line 36 jump to line 32 right what this means is that look up the switch value this one this argument and if it's one then uh, jump to line 36 which means I cons two we have to evaluate this expression so um, we have to, it's a binary operator we load the left value left side right side and then i mol integer multiply and then we i return we return an integer we've seen how the return translates into the bytecode right but then what happens if it's 15 and this is what i'm talking about right so as you can see here uh, uh, in the bytecode, it doesn't say load two, load y, and load five, and then calculate it. It just says uh, if this x is 15. Where is this 15? If it's the result of this calculation. Two times five is 10 plus five, 15. So switch has this limitation that you have, the case levels have to be compile time constants. And uh, the, for the local variables, um, the way they become compile time constants is uh, with declaring them as final. In the bytecode, there is no such thing as final. It's it, JVM doesn't care at runtime, but the compiler cares because there are situations like case labels that you have to have this guarantee that the expression can be evaluated at compile time. That's the way the Java uh, this switch state construct in Java was designed, right? So I hope you understand this. And uh, again, declare every local variable uh, as final. Declare the parameters as final, unless otherwise uh, you need to change them. And we can do the same thing here. For example, we can say int y, we can pass y. And then uh, again, the compiler gives us an error saying that 2y plus 5, I cannot compile, uh, calculate at compile time because uh, I, don't, I don't have a guarantee that the value uh, of y is not going to change. But what if we say final? It is still doesn't allow you, which makes sense because the compiler doesn't actually know. Now we're giving the compiler the guarantee that the value of the y that is passed to the method is not going to change. But the compiler doesn't know what the value of y is at compile time. We could invoke this method with different values of y. And again, the case, the limitation for this case label is that it has to be evaluated at compile time. And Java doesn't allow having like default values. That's why uh, you cannot do this, right? 
so uh, you can have the case labels as uh, expressions based on the local variables or global variables as long as they are declared as final so I can have for example final int z equals 10 this is a, a state variable uh, this is part of the class definition right this is a field and maybe I can use it uh, with my case label and it, it doesn't allow so cannot make a static okay so uh, uh, a static we have to define this as static and this is perfectly allowed in the expression of the switch because again we had to define it as a static because this method is a static but then if we don't declare it as final then the compiler doesn't allow you to use this variable in the in the uh, case label all right so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one